Th um, and thank you, Mr. George. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Um, okay. We're ready to go. Ten minutes, uh, Mr. Crabb, and um, I'll tell you when uh, you've two minutes left. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, all. Uh, those of you that don't know me, I'm Barry Crabb, and um, I've lived here around uh, Napier most of my uh, life, and I've seen some great and bad changes taking place. I grew up during the Second World War, and after the war I served my time as a junior engineer with the Post and Telegraph Department. I was surrounded by very can-do and innovative and positive people, where can't-do was never heard or spoken. I was involved with the building of microwave stations on very high hills and mountains and new exchanges to give all New Zealanders a 24-hour, 7-day, 365-day service even to remote areas. A lot of these sites and exchanges are still in full operation today. I was fortunate to be in a can-do atmosphere when New Zealand was building massive hydroelectric dams, roads, railways and tunnels. We were building our own world-renowned locomotives, New Zealand Forest Service, developing forests which are being harvested today, seven car manufacturing plants, Morrison Industries, Watties, all of which I was very fortunate to have been involved with. <coughs> our own engineers and tradesmen developed all of these. Now we import new locomotives because they are slightly cheaper and we spend millions having to repair their faults. And a good example, of course, is the propeller and shaft braking off the Inter-Island Ferry, fitting braking systems in new rolling stock. You have been overseas, uh, you uh, even bring overseas consultants in. Why? We have some of the best world-renowned engineers and scientists, um, and even you employ some of them. The Napier-Gisborne line was completed in 1942, designed and built by Kiwis. They built it over some of the world's most challenging terrain, with a limited machinery compared to today. Why did the government of the day do it? They knew the potential of the East Coast and they also knew the restrictions facing shipping along the coast and that Napier was the closest safe port. Rail was the only option to carrying large amounts of heavy freight quickly and efficiently with very little impact to the environment. Gisborne, Wairara and all of the East Coast thrived, especially forestry, cropping, and farming all along the line. So what's changed? Nothing apart from a slip costing $4 million. At a recent meeting at the Napier City Council of Concerned People, the then Kiwi Rail Maintenance Engineer, Bill Rarari, said he would talk with the local iwi and with a few pipes and a D8 bulldozer, he could repair it in about two weeks at a cost of two and a half million dollars. And I know he would have done it because of his past proven history and can-do attitude. The bridges in the rest of the line, and the rest of the line, the government say, will cost millions in the future. These concerns, read the costs, etc., depend on who is paying the engineers and the desired outcome they want. Example, the West Shore Bridge, they now say can't carry the load. Only a couple of years ago, it was repaired and strengthened to carry the load for the next 15 to 20 years. 
the line must reopen to carry these large tonnages of goods and to encourage further growth and export potential of the East Coast. The government, you and I know that billions will have to be spent on the existing road if the line closes. These way out people who talk about the cycle trail and compare it to the Otago Rail Trail, which is reasonably flat. Not like the Gisborne Line, it is mainly rocky country and has very short tunnels on the Otago Trail. The cost of lighting the beach loop tunnels would cost millions if this was to become a rail, tra a rail trail. Because of the terrain, it would cost millions to develop for very little return and would attract very few patrons, no spectacular views, no snow-clad mountains and history. What an asset lost if this line was closed. West Shore Beach. I have watched the changes of the beach over my lifetime, caused mainly by the port, breakwater, and the dredging of the shipping channels. This breakwater has been a godsend to the town beach, which is accreted and prevents high seas breaking over the seawall and going down Emerson Street, as my grandmother had experienced years gone by. We want the port and what it means to Napier and Hawke's Bay. But your consultant, Dr Comar, solution of shingle replenishment does do nothing for the recreational facilities that the beach was 30 odd years ago. The shingle has no binder in it. It is very easy to erode in high seas. The material used around 1986 was dredged out of the Pandora Pond and contained fine shingles, sands, silt, shells and fines. This set like concrete when placed along the West Shore Breach in a 1986 storm stood up, stood up extremely well. Without these binders in the shingle, from the town beach, they erode very easily. The case study I refer to, and in my submission to you, a solution developed by your own engineers to prevent erosion of the river bank, which was very successful. It was on an interlocking concrete slab wired together so that when undermined would slip down, preventing further erosion. Extra concrete slabs are placed and secured on the top of the structure when needed and when well stabilised, no further structure is needed. This principle... T two minutes, Mr Crabb. Thank you. This principle was used when building the breakwater but used blocks instead. This plus binders placed in the town beach shingles could be very beneficial. All I'm asking is that you trial the same system on, say, 400 metres of the beach. And I would appreciate the opportunity to discuss this with your, yourselves and your engineers at a later date. River and water management. I very much support water storage uh, for the benefits to the welfare of Hawke's Bay and the future. This should be done on all of our rivers especially on the lower reaches of the Tukituki for irrigation and flood control, the narrow river, especially around the aquifer in intakes for the Heratonga Plains, and also the Tutakuri. Low-level dams of 10 metres are cheaper to build, require smaller structures, less engineering and geotechnical design for earthquakes. It was suggested by one of your engineers that they would silt up very quickly, dependent on the terrain. I agree that this could be, but this could be alleviated 
by building an upstream lower dam to trap these materials and to be dredged out and sold at a good return, especially the ones closest towards the city. Thank you. And that is your 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. that is your 10 minutes complete. Thank you. So thank you very much for your submission. Right. Um, I'm going to go straight to Ms. Briasco Express Bus Service. Oh, good. Good afternoon. Welcome. So, um, Very quick. Welcome. No, um, you have 10 minutes, and if you wish us to ask you any questions, um, please consider that in your presentation. Okay. Uh, and I will tell you when eight minutes are up. I'll be so. until you finish by then. Thank you. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity. Um, I'd also like to thank Councillor Dick for, um, for your responsiveness to my queries. Um, not all of us were able to be here today because the others had to work, so thanks very much for seeing me. Okay, so while, while we're realistic that we may not see Route 10 reinstated, we hope very much that the Council will reconsider some form of express service for the early morning work commuters from Napier to Hastings. With respect, the st statistics provided by, uh, for Route 10 and 12 don't tell the whole story. Um, the Route 10 buses travelling from Napier mornings and from Hastings evening were in the two years that I was using it, pretty well patronised, except when the weather was poor, because when the weather was poor, people didn't make the long foot journey to the bus stop. They would tend to find some other way to get there where they didn't. So there were times when the bus wasn't as well used. In fact, after Christmas this year, we, those of us using it regularly noticed quite a, a sharp increase in the use of the bus, so that there were about 15 to 24 people in the mornings on a 26 seat a bus, that's pretty good really, in Hawke's Bay. Um, that was until the newspaper article announcing the discontinuation of the service. After that, usage uh, declined very quickly. Some people even bought cars. However, we've often commented on how f we often commented on how few people used the route from Hastings in the morning and from Napier in the evening. We could see that the bus would pass us and, you know, on, the, on the expressway. So of course patronage of the number 10, if you look at the whole, at the whole service, looked pretty poor because there were only two or three people coming from Napier and Hastings in the morning and going to um, Hastings in the evening. Um, I'm sure you recognise that, um, that the bus using the number 10 was considerably smaller than the, uh, than the bus used for the number 12 uh, route. Um, we would have been interested to learn about utilisation last year of the Route 12 at the times when the Route 10 operated. Our observations suggested that probably the proportion of people using the Route 12 at those times, that's very early in the morning and later in, 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 in the evening at the end of work time, um, were not much greater, especially when you consider the size of the bus. <coughs> um, when our fellow Route 10 users at that time had to use the 12 because they were a little late or something. They often reported that the utilisation of those that Route 12 was very, um, very low. That's not to say that in the middle of the day and um, during school time and student time that the, the Route 12 is, is a very busy bus. We we understand that. Um, although. Um, my two colleagues and I are now mostly carpooling to get to and from work. We would still prefer to use uh, public transport and for the reasons that we state in our submission. However, we really don't want to be having our working day an additional hour than it that was when we used the number 10. Of course, the number 10 was still a longer journey than um, private car because it was taking me us 30 to 35 minutes a day. It's now taking me about 20 minutes a day to get to work, but I would prefer to use public transport. But previously I caught the number 10 at 7.20 in the morning, arriving at the hospital at 7.45. The same trip on the number 12 would have me catching the bus at 7, so it's 15 minutes earlier. I know it doesn't seem much, but you know, <laughs> in the morning. And in the evening, 
the previous return journey, I would get on the bus at uh, 4.55 and I'd get off the bus at 5.15. Now I'd ha have to get the bus at 4.45 to get off at 10 to 5. Um, so it's about an hour. A number of the previous Route 10 patrons are using the number 12 out of necessity because they have no other way of getting to Hastings to work. They're doubly disadvantaged as a result. They spend about an extra hour of travel a day and it costs them 37 cents more each way for the privilege of using that service. Um, I applaud the, the Council on improving transport for students and for the elderly particularly. Um, it's great to see more public transport being to, used and you know in the last 20 or 30 years we've seen um, public transport system in Hawke's Bay improved out of sight. Um, however, us workers <laughs> still need to get to work and we prefer to use public transport. Um, um, I urge you please to consider options for an express service in the mornings. I won't, I, I've given, we've given a couple of um, alternatives and I'm sure there are others. Um, especially for those of us working in the Stortford Lodge area. I know that the number 11 continues, but that number 11 would require us to change buses in, um, in Hastings Central to get to the Stortford Lodge end of town, and that would be even longer than getting on the number 12. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you for a very clear presentation. Uh, questions? I understand you've been talking to Councillor Dick, but do you have a question or comment um, on that? Oh, Christine, <laughs> thanks for that and, and your suggestions. Um, do, do most of you, you and your colleagues work for the, the hospital, do you? Um, I would say um, there were about, probably about two thirds of the passengers were using the DHB, but okay. there, were a, there were a few that um, were coming from, that were working in Stortford Lodge, three yeah. or four people, and there were another no, number of people that worked in Central Hastings. Okay. But they were coming from, to get into town, to get the number 11, yeah. would have been, you know, too, too difficult and also costly. Okay. Mm. Well, in terms of the, uh, uh, those of you, you who are working for the DHB, does the DHB offer any assistance with travel? No. It's never considered it? No, I don't think so. Mm. Mm. Do, do you know if it happens in other parts of the country? I don't know. No. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Ms. Berusco, for your um, submission. You and a number of other submitters have all had much the same comment to make about the one-way traffic that appears to be using the bus. Presumably there must be two services if they keep crossing and come they back do. again. Yeah, they do. Um, mm. All these submitters, um, I don't know whether you're familiar with them, are they all on that early morning bus or uh, are they spread between the two services? Because um, the two early morning buses ran about... 30 minutes apart, mm. and I know that there were some that made submissions that were on the, the okay. slightly, but we yep. had also discussed, and I talked to uh, Councillor Dick about, uh, my, most people were in agreement that if there was a, a midpoint bus, and one, but one instead of two, mm. then most of us could fit onto that. You know, the, for example, <coughs> the bus that we got left at uh, 7.15, and then there was another one at something like quarter, quarter to eight. If there was a half past seven bus that would have fitted. The other thing that I should mention that um, there were a number of boys who, who started getting on at the hospital and then continued on and that bus did a ring, became a number 11 and then went to the boys high in Hastings, in Napier. So there were, the bus drivers told us that that bus continued to be quite full all the way back to, um, to the boys high in Napier. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown. Uh, actually, that sort of answered my question a little bit because it's an issue of backloading, isn't it? There's a front load, mm -hmm. not a backload. Um, but that actually answered that question. Um, have you put that, that, you know, that a bunch of boys would get on at a certain stop and they won't grow, bring them back to school, so it's earlier morning workers, have you put that to the transport uh, committee? And that we, is there a possibility we just have one bus with that backload, why do we need to have a bus going backwards and forwards if there's no demand from Hastings to Napier, mm. and the demand is the other way? Mm. Is there a way we can structure that? I'd need to I, refer I to my suge betters. I, I suggested it verbally, it was what, something I did suggest verbally. I might have put it in writing, but I'm not sure. 
but it certainly was something that we did suggest. Mm. The problem is that the bus coming back in the evening, the boys aren't on that bus, I don't think, the number 11, because it becomes, what used to happen was the number 10 would become a number 11, I assume, and then continue on. Um, but coming back the other way, I'm not sure that that happens because those kids get get on a different bus, I assume, yeah. Get on slightly earlier, wouldn't they, and come pick yes. you up? Yes, So yes. That, the backload would work in reverse. It might do. I do recognise that there's a cost, you know, I recognise, I understand why you've done this, but, you know, we like to express us. And, and yeah, yeah. Mm, thank you. It's a great time and great question to finish with. Uh, and thank you for your um, presentation. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much.